Hello Year 12, uh, pretty budget hasty video here, but uh, let's have a look at exercise 3C here. Uh, systematic curve sketching is what I've called this. We're not using calculus, which is another tool we could use for sketching. We'll get to that later on. We're just combining some of the tools that we've learned so far um, to sketch uh, more functions than we've sketched before. So I've got a bit of a checklist here. It's not really exhaustive. Uh, I haven't done things like check for oddness or evenness, which can speed up the process a little. Um, but let's have a look at these things. First of all, combine any fractions that you've got there in the function. Right, so factorising, combining the, f the fractions uh, makes it a lot easier to do the next parts of this. Uh, check out the domain. So the main things we're looking for here, remember, is that we can't divide by zero, we can't take the square root of a negative number, uh, and we can't do the log, or we can only do logs of positive numbers. So check out the domain, write that down, uh, that will help us as well. Uh, find the x and y intercepts for an x intercept y equals zero, for an x y intercept x equals zero. Um, the y intercepts are usually very easy to find. The x intercepts, that's where we want it to be factorised typically. Right, and then we use our null factor theorem to do those. Uh, a table of signs. So we look for uh, the y-intercepts as well as restrictions on the domain, I suppose. Remembering that uh, we can't, a function can't go from positive to negative. The sign of a function can't change without either crossing the x-axis uh, or having uh, a discontinuity or asymptote. So we look at the zeros, right, that's our x-intercepts, and we look at those restrictions on the domain that might be an asymptote or a discontinuity, right, and then we work out a table of signs. So we look at those critical points and a number on either side, a value, an x-value, either side of them. Vertical asymptotes, so when the denominator is equal to zero and the numerator is not equal to zero so the bottom zero the top isn't I've got an asymptote where the bottom is zero and the top is also zero I've got a discontinuity where the top is zero but the bottom is not then I have a what we call a zero a root then we cross the x-axis Right, yeah, so we do that. That's our vertical asymptotes and discontinuities. And then what I've said is examine the behavior of the function as x gets very small and very large. Uh, by that, really, we're looking at the limit. And when we're dealing with rational functions, so a polynomial over a polynomial, divide every term, top and bottom, by the highest power of x, uh, and then uh, you should be able to knock out anything with x in the denominator will approach zero at either of those points. Right, uh, keeping those things in mind, I've got a function here we're going to sketch. We've done ones just like this before. We're going to take this systematic approach. There's my function. The first thing that I want to do is consider um, factorising. So I'm going to say this is equal to 2x squared on x plus 3 x minus 3. Right, yeah. Now, that makes it a bit easier to see here with my domain. Uh, that x can't be 3 or negative 3. So x does not equal negative 3. And x does not equal 3. We could uh, use that bracket interval notation. So that would be negative infinity. Uh, to negative 3 uh, can't be equal to that and union that with negative 3 to 3 and union that with 3 to infinity okay that's not as easy or as neat as doesn't equal negative 3 or doesn't equal 3 so that's my domain. That's the second thing that I wanted to do. Third thing I want to do, x and y intercepts. So let's say x intercepts. Let y equal 0, or function x equal 0, I should say, at this stage. Therefore, 2x squared 
over x squared minus 9 equals 0, therefore x equals 0. The only way to make that 0 is to make the numerator 0. The only way to make 2x squared equal 0 is for x to be equal to 0. And I don't have conflict with the denominator there. If x equals 0, the denominator isn't 0. So there we go. That is my x-intercept, which means it's also my y-intercept, right? Uh, there's no need to do the next step and say let y equal oh, sorry let x equal zero. Uh, what's my y-intercept? If it passes through the origin, that's an x and a y-intercept. There's no other. It wouldn't be a function if there was another y-intercept, and there are no other x-intercepts. So that's going to do me for my intercepts. Now we need a table of signs. So the critical parts here are negative three, zero, and three. Let's say x and my sign. So negative 3, 0, and 3. They're significant ones. OK, I know something's happening there. These are places where my sign could change. So I know when x equals 0 that it is neither positive nor negative. It is equal to 0. At negative 3, it's undefined. Let's just put an asterisk here and equally at 3, undefined. Now, what happens if x is a number like, I need something less than negative 3, let's say negative 4. Uh, I, let's say something between negative 3 and 0. Ones are always good. Let's put 4 here. Actually, you know what I'm going to say? Oh, no, let's say 4. That's fine. It doesn't have to be 4. It could be 5, 6, could be 10, could be 100. And maybe, I was tempted there for a moment to put 100 in there. Uh, because you don't make so many silly errors when one of your numbers is really big. Now, let's consider this negative 4. If this is my function up here, 2x squared over x squared minus 9. Uh, if x is negative 4, my numerator is positive because I square it and double it. My denominator would be negative 4 squared is 16 minus 9. 16 minus 9 is positive. It's positive over positive, uh, which makes that positive. At x equals negative 1, the numerator is still positive, but the denominator now is 1 minus 9, which is negative positive. Divided by negative is a negative. At x equals 1, the numerator is positive, the denominator is negative again. And if x equals 4, I will have uh, a positive over uh, 16 minus 9, which is positive. So that's my table of signs. OK, we're really rolling along through these things now. Vertical asymptotes and discontinuities. Well, uh, vertical asymptotes. Remember, the denominator is 0. The numerator is not 0. So at x equals, let's say, 3, the denominator will be 0. Uh, the numerator would be 18. x equals negative 3, denominator is 0. The numerator again is 18. So I have vertical asymptotes. My vertical asymptotes are x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. OK, we're getting through there now. Now we've got to look at what happens when x is very large and very small. So let's, I'm going to do the positive one first. The limit as x approaches infinity of, now I've got 2x squared on x squared minus 9. Remember what I do in this case with a rational function is divide everything by the highest power of x, which is x squared. So that's the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared over x squared over x squared over x squared minus 9 over x squared. Okay, which equals, right, 2x squared over x squared is 2, x squared over x squared is 1. Now, negative 9 over x, as x approaches infinity, 9 gets divided by a very large number, which makes it 0, or approach 0. The limit is 0. So it's 2 over 1 equals 2. Right. So I have, uh, as my function approaches infinity, as it moves off to the right of my number line, then it's approaching 2. Similarly, 
uh, informational functions, you're going to find these uh, to always uh, be very, very similar. Oops, my infinity is getting worse, I go further along. Uh, as I approach negative infinity of 2x squared over x squared minus 9, just keep an eye on it. Uh, but I'm going to get the same thing. I divide 3 out by the x squareds, and I'm still going to have uh, 2x squared over x squared, or 2 over 1 minus 9. And as I approach negative infinity, um, then once again, those other terms drop towards 0, and I get 2 again. So I have a horizontal asymptote is y equals 2, and that's at uh, positive and negative infinity. Now that I've got all those things, I can sketch it up. And it's kind of the last things that I've done that are going to be most helpful with my sketch. So axes x, y. Put your arrows in, put your labels on. Uh, vertical asymptotes here at negative 3 and at 3. And a horizontal asymptote. It's not a correct scale there, is it? But anyway, y equals 2. Right, that's my horizontal asymptote. Uh, referring to my table of signs, oh, actually my intercepts, I get passed through the origin, and it's negative on both sides of that. Oops, so it's going to do this. Over to the asymptote there and here. Okay, so my intercept was the origin, and right, I've got a vertical asymptote either side of that. Over here, my sign is positive, so that's going to have to be like this. Looking at this, you should see that that's going to be an even function. I could test that. Remember, we can test for evenness. However, I think we're still going to do most of that work, whether we know it's odd, even, or neither, anyway. Right, yeah, that's it. That's all we had for this exercise here. You can see there's nothing particularly new. Next up, we're going to look at solving in equations. Um, but, what do I want to say? Um, that bit of a checklist. I try to remember it as much as you can. Simplify your function. All right, start by simplifying your function. Then, what you need to do is to check out the domain. That's going to help you, both those steps. Going to help you find the x and y intercepts. From there, drop a table of signs helps to work out where the graph is, at what the sign of the graph is, and, and where it's going to sit um, relative to the x-axis anyway, for various x values. Uh, check out vertical asymptotes, being careful to watch for discontinuities. Right, Not every time the denominator equals 0 will be an asymptote. Sometimes it's just a discontinuity. Uh, vertical asymptotes and discontinuities, check those out. Then have a look at what's happening at the far left and right of your function, towards infinity and negative infinity, dividing by the highest power of x, generally speaking. Uh, and then, when we draw our sketch, it's a good idea to put the asymptote, uh, any asymptotes in early, right, so that you can draw your graph around that, then your table of signs uh, and your intercepts should tell you where everything else goes. Right, yeah. Uh, that's it. If you've got any questions, make sure that you ask me in class. Thank you very much, E12, and I'll see you next time.